Good morning. Sunday, the 14th day of Tishrei. Tonight, we celebrate the first night of Sukkot. We have the mitzvah tonight to go into the Sukkah and to eat at least a kazais, a piece of challah, make the bracha in the Sukkah for the first time. Tomorrow, of course, we're going to bench the lulav and the esrog and uh, make sure you do it. If you don't have, you can come to the Chabaras here, or any Chabad, and do the bracha. So uh, let's start with putting on putting in tzedakah. And today we're going to learn, uh, starting first, the lesson of yesterday, Shabbos, which was the 13th of Tishrei. We began the new letter, letter 22, in the Igris Kaidish. And uh, give a little bit of a background of this letter. It's a very interesting letter. And it talks about the advice that people came to seek from the Alter Rebbe. So the Alter Rebbe, after the passing of the Mizritcha Magid, there was uh, Rebbe Nachem Mendel Haradaka. He was, he was the successor, the leader of the Hasidim. And then he moved to the Holy Land and the Talmidim of the Magid, they divided the different parts of Eastern Europe, that each each Rebbe, each student would take a little, a different area, a different region. And that's why you have the different Hasidim today. You have Hasidim from this town, they call the Belza, the Babava, the different, different Hasidim, they, they named on the town because their Rebbe was the Rebbe in their town. And the Alta Rebbe was given a very large portion of uh, Lithuania because that's where he came from. They called them the Litvak and other parts. And there was many, um, many, many Hasidim. And thousands ended up with many, many thousands of Hasidim. And naturally, it didn't have, it, it was not enough time to see everyone. And uh, privately, this is when he wrote the book of Tanya, by the way. He also wrote and he explained that this is why he wrote the book of Tanya, that anyone who has any question in how to serve Hashem and how to deal with his life issues, he would learn the Tanya. And if he wouldn't understand that, he would go to a local rabbi and ask him to teach him the Tanya, to give him advice from this book. So this is the first part of the Tanya. And then, like we said many times, this the, the children of the Alter Rebbe added these other parts, when, which what we're learning today is a different a part from a letter that the, Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe wrote to the community. So anyway, the letter that he wrote, what we are learning today, is a, is a part, an excerpt of a big, a long letter that Alter Rebbe was writing about the fact that people come with simple questions, questions about material things, questions about, you know, Parnassa, this thing, this is, and he says, this is something that it's not for me to answer. It's something that uh, a prophet perhaps can can talk about those things. Like he brings the example of, of uh, the prophet Shmuel. When uh, Shaul Amelech, the king, as Shaul before he became king, he came to look to look for his father's donkeys. And he came to the prophet to tell him where the donkeys are. So he says, those are things for the prophets. And al Rebbe, very in strong words, said that they shouldn't bother him with these things. And this is perhaps one letter that is that was not heeded by the Hasidim. Because the Hasidim continued to ask blessings from the al Rebbe, even after the al Rebbe asked not to. And the al Rebbe ultimately agreed, and he continued to answer. So what is interesting here, there is a sikha, there is a, 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 a the Rebbe's talk in 1991. The Rebbe spoke about the fact that Hashem gave us in our generations 
he gave us the prophecy back. And he said that the leaders of our generations, specifically the leaders of the Hasidus, they're called the Nassim, that they are the prophets of today's generation. And they are the ones who give advice both in physical things and material things and in spiritual things and guiding us. And the Rebbe points out that although the Alter Rebbe, in this letter that we're going to read today, he said that this is not for him to answer, but it's for prophets to answer, says the Rebbe, but we see indeed that the Alter Rebbe continued to answer those questions. And the Rebbe therefore suggests that those indeed, the Alter Rebbe indeed is, is a prophet, and the leaders and the Rebbes of our generations, they are they have the prophecy, the spiritual guidance from Hashem. And he quotes the Rambam that it said, the Rambam says, the Maimonides says, that the prophecy will return to Israel. And that is indeed what is happening. And therefore, the Rebbe concludes that we have to hear what the, the prophets instruct us, that the coming of Mashiach is imminent, that it's here and it's happening, and we need to, and we need to do what we need to do to accept to receive Mashiach with all the good things that we do. So, let's see inside the letter twenty-one from yesterday. Then we we'll continue to today's lesson. Where's the Alter Rebbe? Ahuvai achai vereyai, my beloved, my brethren and friends, me'ava mesuteres teichachas megula. Out of my hidden love for you springs an avert rebuke. Come now and let us debate, let us discuss. Remember the days of old, consider the years of every generation. Has such a thing ever happened in days past? Where indeed have you found such a custom in any of the books of the early or latter sages of Israel? That it should be the custom an established norm to ask for advice in mundane matters. As to what one ought to do in matters of the physical world. He says, this is not something that was done. People never came to, to rabbis and leaders to ask about material things. And he says, such questions were not asked even of the sages, the greatest of the former sages of Israel, such as the Tanaim and the Maraim, those are the sages of the, the Mishnah, of the Talmud. Those sages from whom no secret was hidden. And for whom all the paths of heaven were clearly illuminated. Even they were not asked about material things. Then who was asked for material things? Only prophets. But only of actual prophets. We used to live among the Jewish people, such as Samuel the seer, they call him Shmuel Arroy because he's a prophet who sees. Samuel the, the seer to whom Saul went to inquire of God through him about the donkeys that his father, his father has, had lost. And he says, why were these things not asked of regular rabbis, regular sages? So he says, 
He says, sages are there to teach Torah. They're not for, tell us about material things. That's what Alter Rebbe says here. For in fact, all matters pertaining to man except for words of Torah and fear of heaven are apprehended only by prophecy. As the verse states, there is no bread unto the wise, meaning bread re- represents all material needs. It's not given to the wise, meaning it's not through the wisdom that you will tell you what, how to earn your bread. And as our sage of, of blessed memory said, everything is in the hands of heaven except for the fear of heaven. And he quotes another statement that says, mechusim. Likewise, as it says, seven things are hidden. No, no, no one knows seven things. And he quotes, what are some of the seven things? He says, Ein odem yedei No man knows how he will earn his living. David, Nor when the kingdom of David will, ret- will be restored, when Mashiach, when Mashiach will come. This is something that we don't know. Nobody knows. And he says those things are compared. Note that these two questions are likened to one another, just as no one knows exactly when Mashiach will come. So too, no one knows by what means he or she, in fact, will obtain the sustenance. So, Tal Rabbi is saying, those questions are material things. I'm not the address. I'm not, in other words, he's suggesting he's not a prophet. Now, the Alter Rebbe says, seems to be a verse in Yeshaya that suggests that, a, that a, wise, a wise person, meaning a sage, is also an advisor. So it seems to be that a chacham, a sage, is also an advisor in things. So the Alter Rebbe goes on to say that this is that's not what it means. It means advice in Torah things, not in material things. That's what Alter Rebbe is saying. As for the phrase in Isaiah, the counselor and a man whose wisdom silence silences all, suggesting that Torah wisdom qualifies one to adv- advise in other fields as well. Or another statement, and also as for the statement of our, our sages of blessed memory, that people derive from him the benefit of Eitza, counsel, and Toshio, means wisdom. Says the Alter no, this counsel is not talking about material things, they're talking about Torah things. These teachings refer specifically to counsel in matters of Torah, which is called Toshia, assistance. As our sages say, Our sages of blessed memory said, a counselor is one who knows how to inter, intercala, intercalate years, making certain years, leap years, and interpolating uh, an additional month of other. That's what we do to calculate which month is the one, the year that has to be a, a leap year. And how to determine the months, those are the advice that we're talking about. We're talking about advice in Torah things. For in the Torah terminology, the principle of intercalation is called counsel. And a secret as stated in the tract, it's another, page 87. See the commentary in Rashi there, which states explicitly that the terms counselor and advice are related to the principle of intercalation. So those, this is the, the science of making the new month and the new year, and to make the leap year.
So the bottom line here, the Alter Rebbe says, don't bother with these things. But again, as we said before, the Alter Rebbe himself ultimately did accept. So what, what does this suggest? Suggest that the Alter Rebbe agreed that he, in a way, that he's a prophet. He's saying that only prophets are able to advise, and then he accepted it. And this is why the, the Alter Rebbe is really telling us that this is we are we are here, and, and the Rebbe brings the quotes the letter from the Alter Rebbe that he later add, added. That he is also was referring to counseling in physical things. So this is the end of yesterday's share. And we're going to go now to the, today's lesson. So in today's lesson, Al-Trebbe goes on to explain that talking about, in general, coming to the Al-Trebbe and asking for advice in things, issues that bother the people, Health, health things, problems with parnasa, and all kinds of physical material problems. So the Al-Trabe is is also telling us in today's lesson that you have to think for a moment, you have to be honest with yourself. So it's, it's easy, easy to come every time there's, there's something bothering you, you have a problem, you're going to go to the rabbi, you focus, focus, and it's going to become good and everything is fine. But the Alter Rebbe says this comes from, from the fact that you love yourself. The self-love is so blinds you, does not allow you to look and dig deeper and to think perhaps there is a message. Perhaps there is a message in why am I in this circumstance? If you have, uh, God forbid, if a person has a headache and has uh, problems, is going to keep taking Tylenol, just to get rid of the headache, you may be missing something. Sometimes you have to go to the doctor to realize maybe there is an underlying problem. So this is what the Alter Rebbe is saying. Just coming to, to me whenever there is a problem and asking for a bracha just like that, you got to dig deeper. See what Hashem is telling you. So again, the Rebbe does give us advice and does help us with blessings, but in the same time, the Rebbe wants us also to put in the right, to put us on the right path. And this, with Al Rebbe, continues in today's lesson. So it says the Al Rebbe, "Ach emes agid However, I shall relate the truth to those who listen to me. Ki ahava mekalkelas ashur, love upsets the natural order of conduct. For it is covering, he didn't, sorry, it is covering, it is a covering of the eyes that prevents people from seeing the truth. The self-love. You don't, you don't seem to look for the, for the truth when something is wrong. Why? Because of the great love for the life of the body. It's not that you want your body to go and enjoy yourself to do your own certain pleasurable things. You just want a healthy body to serve Hashem, which is absolutely justified. It's legitimate. But still, you got to find perhaps there is some reason. There is some message there. So it says, Though this love is indeed experienced for the sake of heaven, so that with a body they can serve God with flashes of fiery fervor and an ardent flame, this love being even greater than the soul's love for God. Okay. They are extremely irate when they are, their body undergoes sufferings. Heaven, for, heaven forfends. 
May God show compassion. Ve'ein yecholim lekabel klal at shemaviru maldaitam lechas izraglei miir leir lishel eitzes mirochak. So he says, therefore, they are not able to bear it at all, to the point that it derives them, that it drives them out of their mind, causing them to tramp up, uh, about from city to city to seek advice from afar. So the, those who seek merely to read of their physical affliction are not following the proper path of the Torah, for in doing so, they don't turn to God by penitently, penitently returning to him with humble spirit and submission of the body. To accept his chast, chastisement with love, for it is him whom God loves that he chastises. That if something happens, if something happens, God forbid, that is a message. And as soon as you realize the message, everything will turn, God willing, will turn good. But this is the advice that the Alter Rebbe says. And again, as the Rebbe teaches us, that Baruch Hashem, the Alter Rebbe did ultimately accept. He did help us with the advice physically. And then the, and the older Rebbe continued. And we help us physically in advising us and guiding us. And thank God that we have the Rebbeim to help us and guide us, both in serving, in, in the advice in serving Hashem and in brachas, in material things, because ultimately this is what will bring Mashiach by bringing godliness into this world. Thank you for joining. Well, have a good yom tov, and we'll see you, God willing.